<clears throat> Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15. The rod and reproof giveth wisdom. That's why we got a bunch of dumb children growing up to be adults. There's no rod and there's no reproof. I'm offended. Well, tough. And a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. I guarantee today there is plenty of mothers out there. And they ought to be ashamed of their children. And if they're not, well, they're not good mothers. Because the Bible says the mother would be ashamed at her children. And she's the one that left the child to himself. She's reaping and sowing. When the wicked are multiplied, when they grow, and we've got a vast population in the world today, and a vast group of people are, are wicked. <coughs> transgression increases. The more wicked people, the more the transgression. So what do you think when you got a church, the, anybody's welcome, all are welcome here, and you bring in the wicked into the church? Transgression is going to increase. But the righteous shall see there the wicked fall. Showing that the righteous is not wicked and the wicked is not righteous. Correct thy son. Oh, another correction. And he, the son, will give you rest. You don't have to worry about the, you know, the phone rings, it's the police. You don't have to worry about when your child comes home he's going to have terrible bad news. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul when you correct. And the modern education system here, since before even the time of Dr. Spock, and why are kids killing each other? Why are there so much violence? Why is there so much bullying? Because you won't want, you will not listen to the Bible. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So this is more than an individual when we all should have a goal. Perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. That's a death into the damnation, condemnation of God. The vision would be, today would be the Lord Jesus Christ. In the time of Solomon, is adhering to the laws, the commandments, and what God has told him, the voice of God. And when time of Solomon where they have not obeyed the voice, the commandments, and the voice of God. And today when they will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there is perishing. Saul perished for his sin. But he that keepeth the law, see, that's the time of Solomon. Happy is he. Now let me say for the Christian. Now, the law is not salvation. And get me correct here. When I say salvation and I make a statement about the law, I'm not saying add the law to salvation. I'm saying there are things in the law. It is perfectly proper for a Christian, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou you know, shalt not print any marks for the dead upon you. Thou shalt not go to a soothsayer. Thou shalt not 
seek them that have familiar spirit. There are things written in the law not for salvation, but would be a good and great testimony when Paul says to abstain from all appearance of evil. Well, what is evil when you read the Bible? When you check the law with Paul. Now, Paul backs everything in the law, not for salvation. But there's one thing of the law that Paul doesn't say anything about, and that's the Sabbath. We're not under the Sabbath. And I am no way saying, you know, for a Christian to do the law, I'm not saying salvation. I'm not saying to keep your salvation. It is a good conduct for a Christian. To obey God. And even we have commandments from Jesus Christ. Even we have a commandment from the, from the apostles. To obey. A servant. Will not be corrected. Don't, there's that correction. By word. I'm going to count to ten. I'm going to tell you again. Don't do it. He ain't listening. For though he understand, he will not answer. You just talk and talk and talk and talk and you don't have no action. I'm going to dock you pay. I'm going to send you home early because we're talking about sir. I'm going to send you home early and you're not going to get a pay. He's not going to give you an answer because he doesn't have to. He, he's not in trouble. See thou a man that is hasty in his words? He's too quick to answer. He doesn't think. He's not prudent. He's not diligent. There is more hope of a fool than of him. There's the two or three way fool, a good fool in the Bible. A man that is haste with his mouth, there's a fool is better. There's more hope for a fool. Because the man that hastens with his mouth is going to say things and he can't take them back. Woe be to that person that is a married individual. And in a fight with his spouse, he just blabs out words. And he's in trouble. Better be a fool. He that delicately bringeth up his servant, oh, servant again, from a child shall have him become his son at length. I know everybody hates servants and, and, and all that stuff today, but you get a servant at a young age and you teach that servant what is need to be done. You teach that servant like you would your own children. There was a servant in the law, the, the Bible said, you know, if it came time to his freedom and he loved his wife and his children and his master, he would bore a hole in his ear and he would be a servant for life. You know, that, that servant from a child, that's the Christian. I wasn't saved when I was a child. Were you not born again? Did you not have the rebirth and start off as a babe in Christ? Are you not to grow in the Lord? How dare we? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Celebrate our first nature that we lived under the devil. Yeah. How come we don't celebrate, we're going to celebrate a birthday. How come we don't celebrate the new birth birthday? Why is that? Why do we celebrate the old nature birth, but we don't celebrate the new nature, the new birth? And when God saved us, when we became born again, we became a new creature, we became adopted of the Father, we have a father that delicately brings us up 
And he's got us for a length of time. What's the length of time? All eternity. An angry man stirs up strife, argument, bitterness. A furious man, he goes beyond anger. Aboundeth in transgression, sin, sin. Yet Paul writes to us, be angry, okay, and sin not. Let not the wrath go upon uh, sundown. A Christian can be angry. Okay? I, my nature, being grown up as a Polish Roman Catholic, I am angry with the Roman Catholic Church. I'm angry with the Pope, the Cardinals, the traditions, the catechism, the idolatry, and all the mess. Or mess. I ain't angry with Catholics. I want to witness the Catholics. I want to tell the Catholics what the Bible says. I'm angry with the system, but I ain't angry with the people. And I'm not angry enough to go into the church and knock off the heads off the dollies and, and burn down the confessionals and, and take the hose and step it on the ground. That's an idiot. That's furious. That's iniquity. A man's pride shall bring him low. Pride is a sin. Proud to be American. I'm proud to be a Republican. Guns, guts, and God. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful enough to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Pride is a sin. Made in America. You know what the Japanese government and the people are? Their pride. Their pride in Japaneseism. Their pride in emperor worship. It's the same sin of North Korea, pride in who we are and what we are. That's the same thing with America. That's the same thing with the English. There's a pride of nationality. We got a thing today, Black Lives Matter. That's pride of color. How do I know it's a pride of color? Why isn't there a White Lives Matter? Why isn't there a Jewish Lives Matter? Why isn't there an Indonesian lives matter? Why isn't there an English lives matter? Why is it just black people? I'm offended that it's only black. Why don't we drop off the B and say lives matter? Because of pride. Because of we don't like servitude. And you offended us by, you know, my great, 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 great grandmother. Was Get off it. My great, 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 whatever it is, go back to the Mayflower. I have a, a grandpa who was on the Mayflower, and he was arrested by the Puritans for selling booze, gambling, and, and festivities on the Sabbath. So well, what do I say to that? Who cares? They're all dead. Serve the Lord and do right. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Pride is never spoken of holiness and righteousness, and yet God will honor the humble. When you're humble, you won't stumble. But when you're in pride, you're going to get destruction. And there is pride being taught out of the pulpits of churches in, in the world today that pride is a good thing. And you'll hear pastors out of, I am so proud of my congregation. I am so proud of my church. I am proud of my wife. I am proud of my children. God never says I'm proud. God says, well done. 
This is my beloved son who I am well pleased. God never says proud. God never says pride. And when a man gets up anywhere, anyhow, anyway, and speaks of pride and proud, you are sinning against the Bible and God the Father. That's what the Bible says. Angry with me? Look what the Bible says. Whoso is a partner with a thief, a betting is what the law calls it. You're in the car. Guy said, hey, stop off at the convenience store. I'll get you Coca-Cola. I'll get something. And he comes running out, jumps in the car. Come on, let's get out of here. He just robbed, he just robbed the store. You're a partner in a crime. Well, what do I do? I stop the car right there, put it in park, take the keys out, and say, you're on your own. I say, officer, I did not know he was going to do that. As soon as I found out he did that, I put, I stopped the car. I, I ain't taking no part in that. You continue to drive off. You're a partner with a thief. Your spouse cheats on their taxes, and you know they cheat on their taxes, and you don't say nothing. You're a partner with a thief. Listen, Ahab was charged with the murder of Naboth. I know we're talking about murder. But he was charged with the murder of Naboth that Jezebel did. Hey, listen, honey, bye. Listen, husband. You're responsible for your wife. And when we've been talking about correction and reproof and the rod with your children, if you know your children are in violation of the law, and in violation against sin in the Bible, you are a partner to your children's sin and crime. You're guilty. He that partners a thief hateth, hate, ooh, that's a mean, nasty word, his own soul. Do you know that when Jesus Christ hung on that cross, there was a thief on the left and there was a thief on the right? One of those thieves said, <laughs> preaching to the other thing, hey, listen, we're guilty. And that thief confessed to Jesus his sins. And Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Only the blood of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, is able to wipe away that thief. And the thief doesn't have to steal a million dollars. He doesn't have to knock off a, a, a armored truck. Takes a pencil from work. Takes pens from work. Steals time from work at the, at the water cooler or gossiping or doing anything but his job. When you have taken something that is not yours without permission. That's a thief. Thou shalt not steal. We are a thief from the child from the time we grew up. Mama said, "Don't take the cookies," and you took a cookie. You're a thief. He heareth cursing, and that's not just four-lettered words. And filthy language. Cursing is also. I hope you dropped it. I hope God will curse you. I hope. I hope you get what you want. I hope fire burns you. I hope lightning gets you. I hope you lose everything. That's cursing. And be ready if not. You, you don't try to stop it. You don't try to hinder it. You allow it. The fear of man bringeth a snare. Oh, the Democrats, if they win the election, oh man, the world is over, America's finished. Oh man, I hope the Republicans win, and we're going to be finished. The fear of man. We're entrapped. 
I can't go witness for Jesus because or, 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 what if they don't like me? What if they tell me, get off your porch? What if they say a four letter word to me? The fear of man bringeth a snare, a trap. It will prevent you from doing what God wants you to do. But whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. With the election, I don't care who's going to be the president. I'm going to serve the Lord and I'm going to truth right with the Lord no matter what government <coughs> we get. I get people all the time in the street ministry. They come up and they, they just filthy cuss me out. They hate me. They yell at me. Oh well. And I get people come up to me. I'm glad you do what you do. Man, keep it up. You put your faith in the Lord, God will protect you. Listen, you need to read Fox's Book of Martyrs. It's amazing testimony of some of those Christians that are going to be in heaven, or are in heaven, absent from the body and present with the Lord. I don't know how somebody can go up to a, a faggot, and that's the wooden pole, and they light fire at your feet, and the fire surrounds your body, surrounds your feet and your and your body and they sing him a man walks up to the to the execution spot and he walks up to the executioner and says you take your hand put your hand on my heart and then you put it on your heart and if my heart is beating any harder and faster than your heart you don't need to believe my religion And yet you've got tons of Christians out there that are in a panic today if one man wins the presidential election and not their candidate. They are in a panic. I've even heard them say, if this, if this man wins, America is going to be ruined. What are we going to do? We're going to serve, I'm going to serve Jesus Christ. I'm going to do right. And if they threaten to arrest me and put me in jail, Things haven't been changed because during the Republican presidency, I have been threatened to be put in jail. Okay? I'll let God take care of me. Many seek the ruler's favor. The higher up. They say, it's not what you know, it's who you know. But every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. There's two judgments coming. For the Christians, the judgment seat of Christ. For the unsaved and the Old Testament saints and the tribulation saints and the millennial saints, there's a great white throne judgment. And if your name is in the book of life, Revelation 20, you go into glory. If your name's not in the book, you go into the lake of fire. But every person from Adam is going to be judged. Oh, and it, there have been people who have been wrongly put in jail. God will judge and make it right. What happened to Jimmy Hoffa? God knows what happened to Jimmy Hoffa, and God will judge everybody involved with Jimmy Hoffa, and God will make it all right. Well, there are people who have been messing with the ballot boxes. God will take all that out one day, and he'll make it all right. There is coming judgment. There's coming a day of reckoning for the saved and for the lost. And God will make it all right. Well, you know, I didn't get that job because I was a Christian. I lost that job because I was a Christian. It will be all made right one day. Let God, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I, the Lord, will repay. I used to have somebody quote that verse. 
Vengeance is mine. And they stop right there and say, uh, 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 uh. You see the golden rule. Do unto others as others do unto you. That's that's a sin. That it means is a, is a means of, of a sin. Because Jesus and the apostles tell us we're to love our enemy. John tells us we're to love the brethren even if they're unlovable. We're to love the brethren. Now we may be at odds with each other. We may be two different people. But we're to love each other. Let God. Iron it all out. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. So when we when we bring the gospel of Jesus Christ, when Jesus said, Go in all the world and preach the gospel, when we go into the world, we are an abomination to the world because they are unjust and we are just. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. If the world doesn't hate you, and you're bringing a form of Christianity to them, and they love you, you got the wrong Christianity. If they highly praise you and your church and everything to be in your church, you're doing something wrong. Because the unjust, the world, Man is an abomination to the just, that which lives right in Christ Jesus. They are to hate you. And there are Christians who are going to heaven. And when there's a Christian that is more righteous than they are, they hate you. And I've had tons of them and my own family. Who profess to be Christian. I ain't going to have nothing to do with you. Stalin, because you, you, you conquer our sin. You tell us about our sin. You insult us with our sin. Then it's Jesus. 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 And Bible. And Bible. And Bible. Aren't you supposed to put Christ back in Christmas? No. Christ was never in Christmas. You're ruining my holiday. That's a fact of life. That our Lord Jesus Christ, holy of all holies, God himself, righteous, without no fault that the Roman government said, we find no fault in him. They loved Jesus so much they gave him crucifixion. And he was so loved by his disciples one of them betrayed him. One of them denied him. I'm trying to do a little adding here. Eight left. And then one stayed by the cross. I think that's 12. Maybe off on the math there. One denied him. And cursed and hollered. And went away waving. One betrayed him. There was only one at the cross. But I think not. What happened to you? I think that's nine makes 12. Where was the other nine? Jesus know that the world hated me first before it hated you. When you get a new convert in Christ, you better not tell him everything's going to be hunky-dory. Everything's going to be great and lovely and wonderful. You're lying. Because there are unjust Christians... That are, uh, that are abomination to you that's just. Living right. That's what it is. Unjust is you're not living right. Just means you're living right. And he that is upright in the way. You're living right. You're doing right. You're trying to do right. Though we're all sinners. Is an abomination to the wicked. Now let's take that wicked again. That wicked. I, I tell you, I teach, you can take that wicked and you can apply that to the, to the Antichrist. The wicked. It's either 1st or 2nd Thessalonians. Do you realize in the period of the tribulation period, the seven years, if you try to do right and not receive that mark, you are an abomination. Remember the first three times abomination shows up in the Bible? You know what the first three times abomination 
It's the Egyptians have an abomination against the children of God. We Egyptians don't eat with the Hebrews. We Egyptians don't have anything to do with shepherds. I forget what the other abomination was. Egyptians, the world, doesn't want to have anything to do with the shepherd, Jesus Christ. But you can keep him in the manger. You can keep him as a baby. And we'll do an unbiblical little manger scene that's not biblical at all. We like that. And then when you come along and say, hey, that's not right, that's not correct, that's not the Bible. And when you, well, you know, I'm good. Well, the Bible says there's none that do as good, no, not one. Well, what's wrong with you? They hate that. You're an abomination. Paul said to the church, one of the churches, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? The world says we want the truth. No, you don't. That's why you listen to the media. You don't want the truth. If the world wants the truth, why is it in six years in a place called Daytona Beach, Florida, they want the Bible preaching, God, Jesus Christ gospel preaching preacher. Why do they want him to shut up? Because they don't want the truth. And anybody that wants to do right and the 144,000 and the Jews that will not take the mark, that is going to be an abomination to the Antichrist that he will take off their head in his anger. You know, Nebuchadnezzar got angry at the magicians. Tell me my dream. <laughs> you you got to tell us what the dream is. No, no. I'm not telling you what you well, We can't do there, There's nobody can. All right. Can't tell me. Kill them all. The Antichrist is going, you don't want to do what I tell you what to do? Kill them. Shadrach, Meshach, and go. we're going to play the music. And when they play the music, you're going to fall down. Work. You're not going to do it. Heat up that thing seven times harder. The Antichrist, like Nebuchadnezzar, is going to get heated. He's going to get angrier. He's going to get ferocious. Didn't we talk about angry? An angry man stirs up strife, a furious man aboundeth in transgression. What is going to anger and display the Antichrist to hatred is everyone in the tribulation period who will and want and try to do right. That is hard saying. I thank God through Jesus Christ I'm saved. I don't need to worry. I don't need to worry about that mark. I don't need to worry about the Antichrist. And listen, God's given me to go out and preach the gospel and try to tell people how to get saved. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus Christ. Next time, Proverbs chapter 30. We're coming to the end of Proverbs.